turn on the equalizer. Boom, boom. We're rolling. Okay, we're rolling. And... Rolling here. Here we go. Welcome to the God of Honeybees podcast. I'm glad you're here. Justin and Herb, and on this episode, I want to talk about how we can reshape how we think about a very common phrase. Um, but at the beginning, I want to start with some announcements. This is also like take three of this episode because I have just been derailing left and right. Um, first of all, uh, first of all, as is customary, what are we drinking? This is Crazy Days Cream Ale. And man, as far as cream ale goes, this is really good. I picked this up from Stoney's Liquors um, on 10th or 16th Street in Indianapolis. It's on the east side. These are really good. It was a six-pack for like eight bucks. So you can't beat that. Um, oh, yes. So right before I started recording, I reached out to people online and just let them know, hey, I'm in the middle of recording. Well, I'm about to be recording. Um, so comment below so I can give you a shout out. And we had some people respond, which is pretty cool. Um, let's double check here. We're checking Twitter. Nothing yet on Twitter. Uh, but on Facebook, my grandma at least liked the status. So thank you, grandma, for uh, responding there. Shout out to grandma on the podcast. And then on Instagram, this person I've been following on Instagram, uh, hit me up, said, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm listening, uh, Give me a shout out here. And his Instagram handle is a decade of poetry. And I hadn't yet in his bio, which I'm going to guess your name is pronounced George, um, George Aldana. Forgive me if that's wrong. I'm just guessing. But in, in the bio, there's a YouTube link to his YouTube channel. And I hadn't yet checked out the videos that he's been posting. He does obviously poetry. Um, but if you go to YouTube, and also search A Decade of Poetry. You can find his page. So I was checking out the videos before I started and whatnot, and there's this one poem. I love YouTube videos of spoken word poetry for some reason, but there's this one poem that he does called Me, Myself, and I, and which is a coincidence. It's like almost directly related with what I want to talk about in this episode. So I'm not going to give it away. Go to YouTube, search a decade of poetry, and then look for his poem that is me, myself, and I, because George, that was dope. And it also relates directly to what I'm doing here. So thanks for that, man. Thanks for hitting me up. I, I Now that I know what kind of videos you got going on, I'll be watching them all. It's great stuff. Also... I want to talk about the book. Progress on the book has been going really well. I think it's I think it's done. Uh, I'm still waiting on feedback from the author and my two favorite podcast hosts from my favorite podcast. I'm sure if I'm able to get feedback from them because I know they're busy, I'll probably integrate whatever comments, whatever thoughts, suggestions they might have. So the book might the book might grow a bit at that point, but I think the main ideas that I wanted to cover are fully fleshed out and they connect. So I think it's pretty much done. What I need to do now is raise money to be able to pay my editor, Patience Ullman of 29pilgrims.com, who I highly recommend. And then every resource for self-publishing that I've looked at is basically screaming at you to have someone, a professional, design your book cover. Like, for the love of God, have someone design it. So I guess I'm going to go that route because I kind of want to just do it right the first time. So I have to raise money for the editing and for the book cover. And then and then we're good to go. So right now on Patreon, I have a $5 a month tier. And that's just to help keep this project going. Cause you know, it costs to have the URL costs to do a couple of the other things I've got in the background. I'm trying to make do what I want to do. Um, but 
if you have any ideas on what authors might do to raise money like that, because I, I don't know what do you do, like a book, a bake sale, or I, I don't know what an author does to that makes sense in that context to raise money like that. But if you have any suggestions, could you please hit me up on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook or godofhoneybees.com or godofbeespodcast at gmail.com because I would really appreciate it. Um, I got to stop. My wife told me I say um too much. And so, so I'm trying to eliminate those from the vocabulary. Patreon. What are you raising? Yes. Oh, yeah. So about Patreon. If you feel like you can chip in five bucks a month to help the project go in, that would be greatly appreciated. But if you can't, don't worry about it because I like doing this stuff. I just want to get these ideas to you. So don't, don't feel like you have to. Everything, everything helps, though. So it'd be appreciated nonetheless. I just appreciate the fact that you're watching or listening or reading or you're checking this in your email. Speaking of the email, I still have stickers and coasters that I can send you for free. I've got an email. I guess you call it newsletter. I don't know. They're, they're email versions of every episode. So they're, they're cleaned up for readability. But then... They're in a PDF version, so they look real nice on your devices. You can print them. You can share them, send them wherever, hang them up in the office, do whatever you want. I try to format them like little mini books, so they turn out really nice. That's in the email. And links to anything that I reference in each episode. So like a couple episodes ago, I talked about a Krishnamurti vi uh, video I saw. I talked about a study with like freezing water and studying the ice crystal forms. Links to those things were in that email. And it's obviously free. It's, it's just an email that goes out. Um, but that's – if you sign up for that at godofhoneybees.com, then I will send you a sticker or a coaster for free that has the logo on it, I think – and one of these corners, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, it's got the little logo. Of course, it's in the profile picture of all these social networks. The sticker of the coaster will have that on it. So I'll send that to you for free. They're badass stickers from StickerMule.com. Uh, really good quality die-cut stickers and coasters. So that's a win-win, right? You get all this great extra information sitting there in your inbox, not cluttering anything up on your desk or or in your notifications or anything like that. And a free sticker or coaster, that's a win-win. And I've got one other thing in the works that I'm trying to make sure it does what I want it to do. And then when that's, when or if that's live, that's going to be accessible through the being on the email list and going to godoffhoneybees.com. So check all that out. I've just got these free stickers and coasters laying around. You might as well get yourself one. Just sign up for free. Sign up, and then you don't even have to check it again if you don't want to. I just want to send this stuff to you. So godofhoneybees.com is where you can get all that. I think those are all the updates that I wanted to do. So let's get on with the episode. I'm also trying, before we dive into this, I'm trying to go a bit slower um, I've heard that I go a little bit too fast, and since I'm also trying to record, well, I am recording this on as a video base for YouTube, it's a little bit weird for me to like look at the camera, look at the notes, look at the camera, look at the notes. So bear with me, I'm trying to get better at this. Okay, Crazy Days Cream Mail. Here is a phrase that I heard just recently. Speak now or forever hold your peace. That's, of course, a common phrase, right? Everyone's heard it before. It was a, quite a few mornings ago now, but my wife said it to me. She said, speak now or forever hold your peace. I don't know what we were talking about at the time. Um, it wasn't said aggressively, but uh, that's what she said. Speak now or forever hold your peace. And usually I wouldn't have thought twice about it because it's a common phrase. Um maybe because I've been trying to get so much work done on the book lately, or I've been watching more like YouTube meditations, maybe that kind of primed my brain to think about it in a different way, but it did hit me in a different way. And I jotted down some notes 
And then that's what I want to share with you. So I'm, we're going to take this phrase, speak now or forever hold your peace, break it down piece by piece and re-examine it, reshape it. Because I think it'll, I think you'll like the, the new take on that phrase at the end of the episode. Just stick with me so I can explain it. Do you remember yesterday? It might be an obviously rhetorical question, but of course you remember yesterday, but can you pick any event that you remember about that day? What the weather was like? Something that pissed you off? Did your shoes fit? Was the coffee in the break room strong enough? Anything like that. And ask yourself, where do these events exist? Can you take something you remember about yesterday and grab hold of it and then bring it into now? Can you grab the weather from yesterday and, and, and bring it to this moment? Can you grab the way that you felt about what so-and-so said from yesterday and, you know, like these, these things, can you manifest it into the current moment? Can it be recalled into reality? No, right? So obviously all of these aspects about yesterday are only existing in the particular firings of neurons in your brain. That's the only place that yesterday exists. So it's interesting then that we give so much weight to our thoughts about yesterday. In the last episode, not the update episode, but like the last actual episode, we talked about using rocks for meditation. And we touched on why we should practice looking without identifying or labeling. Looking at the world around us in this way is an idea that I first heard from Krishnamurti. And like I said earlier, the links to the videos where he's talking about that is right there in the email newsletter. Go to honeybees.com, sign up, you get free stuff and all that information. Anyway, back to the point. Krishnamurti uh, is where I first heard about it. And he's explaining that in a nutshell, uh, only by looking without categorizing can we dissolve the illusory delineation between observer and observed. This kind of false line of separation between observer and observed, between me and something or someone else. It's an illusory barrier. But why, by practicing looking and observing without labeling, it helps see through that. It helps dissolve that. Um, so the benefits to, to learning to look at the world this way, I think, is kind of a twofold product. Um, firstly, it's the slowing of mental chatter. This is because... You're, by doing this, practicing this, you're learning that thought is simply a tool to use in the world just like your other senses. Um, let's see, did I have... No, okay. So, you know, like like the table in front of me here is a bit, is a bit rough in this spot. Do I, am I obsessing over the sensory input of this rough spot? Well, no, of course not. I mean, I can choose to stop feeling it if you can hear that in the background my son's waking up we'll have to pause let's pause here and see if Oliver falls back to sleep okay we're back Oliver's quiet again like I said I'm recording in the kitchen and it's real echoey in here and when I get excited, I talk really loud. So I hope he's, I hope I'm not waking him up. I'll have to try to contain my excitement. Like I said, these ideas I get, I'm really excited about. And apparently I'm talking really loud. But I gotta be real quiet so I don't wake the baby up. Okay, where were we? Oh, yes. So when you realize that your 
thoughts are simply a tool to move through the world, just like all of your other sensory inputs. It helps slow that mental chatter because it helps you not identify with the thoughts because you aren't your thoughts, right? And I'll get back to this in a, in a minute, but this is a really important point. I think about for a, a very simple example, when you're falling asleep, there's this space between when you're conscious and when dreams start. And where did you go at that point? If you were your thoughts, you dissolved, you died in that moment, right? And then you came back and then you die and then you come back. You're obviously not those thoughts. So this is, this is what I'm saying with sensory input. You, your thoughts are just a tool, just like any of the others, any of the other sensory inputs. So recognizing it and, and having this appropriate perspective on it slows the mental chatter. And that's the first aspect about this that I think is a, a beneficial consequence of looking at the world in this way. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can see my dog shuffling around. I'm so sorry for all this extra all this extra environmental sound going on. I lost my place on my notes. Bear with me. Okay. The second part, uh, the second beneficial aspect of looking at the world in this way and the slowing of mental chatter, like as a, as a byproduct of that, is this peace that you start to feel and a, a kind of loss of anxiety. And this shows you that anxiety is coming from thought. And this might be a very obvious point to you, but it wasn't super obvious for me. Like it's something you kind of like intellectually know, like if I'm not thinking about it, how am I getting anxious about it? Yes. But when you start to inhabit that space and quiet the thoughts, it's, it's different to experience that fact than to just know it intellectually. Um, thinking about yesterday or tomorrow can create the illusion of passing time. Um, I'll see if I can find a link for that Cartole thing, but it just happened to come to mind. He has a good explanation of this, but your thoughts about past and future are, is what creates the idea of time. So it also kind of leads to this general sense that like things are moving without you. You better get your act together, figure out what's going on, get with it. Regret, regret rest yesterday, prepare for tomorrow, right? It's like this never ending thing, but that only comes from thought. So slowing that mental chatter can, can really benefit your anxiety level, which of course is obvious, but if it's not obvious to you, like it wasn't obvious to me, this is a benefit to doing that. So simply by starting out observing our world without putting it into boxes or labels can lead us down a path ending with the realization of what our true nature is our true, the nature of our existence in, the, in this world. And it just starts with simply looking with open eyes, which I think is perfect. So with, with all this in mind, that your thoughts are simply, simply sensory input, thoughts about yesterday and tomorrow create the idea of time and thereby anxiety and nothing about yesterday can be recalled into the current moment. How much time should we spend concerning ourselves with yesterday or tomorrow and our thoughts about these things? These reconstructed hypothetical realities, which are our thoughts, are obviously creations of our mind. The moment we exist in as we sit and think about these other realities, yesterday, tomorrow, this current moment will soon become a yesterday as well, shifting into a reconstructed reality that we then can do nothing about. 
how much more important then is it to talk about now? I've heard this point brought up by Muji. If you haven't heard of him before, I believe it's uh, spelled M-O-O-J-I. He's, I don't even know how you classify him. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to call him a spiritual leader. He brings this point up, especially when people in the congregation come up and they've got questions. They want to talk about all these different things. Sometimes if it's getting too off point, he'll slow them down and say, talk about what's happening right now. Let's not worry about tomorrow or what happened yesterday. Just just say something about now. And I think that's just a simple and powerful point. Um, and just as an off note, I have a hard time with the episodes of um, Muji's YouTube channel where there's people talking because it's just like they just ask the same questions over and over again. It's like, he already answered this. Anyway, that's a that's a different tangent. So, it's obviously more important to talk about now because now is the only thing that's actually happening. Everything else is a mental conjecture about yesterday or tomorrow. Everything else exists up here, but this current moment is the only reality that there is or at least as far as the context we're concerned, without getting into um, other other uh, realities and all that kind of stuff, this is the only thing that really is of concern to our existence is this current moment. So let's talk about now. Think about what's happening right now. Where are you right now? As you're listening to this, watching it, reading it, where are you? What's around you? What's happening right now around you? Be very present in your current space. Inhabit that space because it's okay to be here. It's important that you're here and you're right where you are. Do not forget that your thoughts are mere input stimulation categorized and organized by your mind, no different than touch or smell, simply a sensory tool. Let that particular sensory input relax for a moment. Think about right now. Speak about now. And to tie this into the phrase that we're deconstructing, speak now. Next point. The choice to engage in the goings-on around you is, of course, your choice. And this is a beautiful aspect about our existence. We are simply awareness, and we can choose to participate in the game, engage in the context our bodies are in, or we can choose to not engage. Right now I'm not engaging. I'm going to sip on some cream ale. Good stuff. <clears throat> we can not identify with the stimulus or the input if we choose not to. We don't have to. This is the fruit of true growth, being able to increase that space between stimulus and response, between the outside world coming in and how we respond to it, that gap in between those two things. Thanks, Crush, is where true growth happens, increasing that space, decreasing your anxiety, helping you become aware that you have every choice available to you. You can do whatever you want to do, need to do in that moment. That space is endless, and it only grows the more you pay attention to it. Like I said, a fruit of true go growth we have, as humans, the capacity to recognize that we are the witness to these things, watching them like clouds passing by. But they will come and go. Whatever instance you find your mind and body in will come and go. You can choose to engage it or rest in awareness and watch the goings-on around you for what they really are clouds passing by. 
it's at this point that you can truly play the game. Shout out to Adam Watts, Alan, Alan Watts, Alan Watts, because you don't think you are the game. Imagine, um, it was, it hit me this way the other day when I was thinking about it. Imagine a basketball game that you're in the middle of might be having fun, having a good time, but it's relaxed, right? And then you find out that if you lose the game, it means death. All of a sudden, that game has taken on some unbelievable weight, right? And I feel like this is a loose analogy for how we move through life sometimes. We take everything so seriously, and we forget that it's it's a... It's all a play. And because, well, I can't say because, but perhaps because death is the end of this play, we take it too seriously. Like a basketball game that ends in the losing team dying. But we forget. It's all, it's all a performance. It's all experience that's not about you but it's for you you're part of it we just need to recognize that we are the universe experiencing itself through every different form of consciousness that there is and i happen to be this particular wave looking back at the ocean just like you are a particular wave looking back at the ocean, perhaps looking back at me, and eventually we'll just sink back into the ocean. But it's fun for now, isn't it? It's quite a ride right now. So you can choose to engage or not engage. You can choose to step into it, or you can, to tie it into the phrase we're deconstructing, hold your peace. So, here we are. This is the point that I was talking about at the beginning. If I could suggest an adjustment to that phrase that will help keep these concepts in mind, here's what it would here's what I would suggest. Here's a new phrase that I would suggest. Speak about now and forever hold your peace. Recognize that the past and the future only exist in thought and that it is thought that creates the sense of anxiety because thought centered around past and future creates the idea of time. If you focus on now, you can be at peace. Cream ale, that's what's up. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoy what I'm putting out there because I feel like these ideas will help if nothing else, give you something in, uh, interesting to think about, hopefully brighten your day, hopefully have some meaningful impact on the way you move through the world like they do for me. Here's the thing about the podcast. This is a conversation. I want to hear from you because I'm talking directly to you. If you were sitting across this kitchen table from me right now, I would I would want to know your thoughts. I still want to know your thoughts just, just because you're listening to it or reading it or watching it. That doesn't change a thing. I want to know what you think about these ideas that I'm putting out there. So this podcast is hosted on Anchor. If you get the app, the Anchor app, or if you go to, I think it's like anchor.fm or anchor.com, something like that, you can actually leave me a voicemail. Um, specifically through the app, makes it super easy. Or you can tweet me at G-O-H podcast. You could hit me up on Instagram at God of Bees podcast. You could send me an email to uh, godofbeespodcast at gmail.com. And the best way to access um, all the content I provide um, or the references for things that are in the episodes or to reach out me, to, to me directly because there is a contact page on godofhoneybees.com. You go there, sign up for that email newsletter, get something for free, get all that great content, get anything new that comes down the line, sitting there in your inbox for reference later. And if you go to godofhoneybees.com, there's a contact page, you could hit me up there. So I'm, I try to make myself as open and accessible to you as possible. 
so that you can let me know what you think about this content. Because like I said, I want to craft it like a conversation. I don't want just blind episodes going out twice a month. I want to know what you think. I want your feedback. So hit me up on any of those outlets and that would be awesome. Also, if you like the concepts that I'm presenting in the show, you'll probably like my book once it comes out, The God of Honeybees. I dive deeper into these concepts I'm talking about in these episodes. I relate it to my own background, and then I weave it together to try to show you how all of this is connected in, in, in one vein. And I'm so stoked about that book. I'd want to get it in your hands. So keep keep an eye on this channel, on the YouTube channel, on the, the social media channels, on the podcast, because I'm working real hard to be able to get this thing up and running, the book, and get it into your hands. So if you want to chip in to help the project keep going, patreon.com. I might be talking too loud again. Patreon.com, five bucks a month, helps support the project, helps me get closer and closer and closer to getting that book off the ground. Um, and just, if you can't do it, like I said, don't worry about it. I'm still going to put this stuff out there. But if you can, all of it would be appreciated. Also, just in case I can't, and just in case I didn't mention this at the beginning of this next take, I'm trying to do speaking events for promoting the book. Um, if you have any ideas on how to go about just starting a ground zero for, for giving some talks about content that I'm working on in a public setting, hit me up on any of those outlets that I mentioned because I would greatly appreciate it. When I'm thinking about how to raise money for the book, this keeps coming to mind, doing a public speaking event about these ideas. I'm trying to find some spaces around Indianapolis where I could give a talk about it. If anyone's interested in helping me get this book off the ground, you know, have that available. But really just like spreading these ideas, seeding these ideas with people that might be interested in it so that when the book is available, like I'm, I'm connected with them and I'm like, here you go, here you go, the thing is finally done. So if you have any ideas on how to start out speaking gigs. Any information would be super, super appreciated. Special thanks to Vidivo for the footage that's used on the YouTube version of this show. And for this episode, a special thanks to KarnBeats.com for the music you've heard. This has been God of Honeybees podcast. I'm Justin Herb. Talk to you soon. <laughs>